Welcome back. All right, so Florida and Ottawa are about to play a preseason game, uh, which should be fun for those in Hockeyville watching it. But I want to talk about the Ottawa Senators as they have not yet signed Shane Pinto. And of course, there's blame going around, but I, I really think that there are some simple reasons why we're in this situation, right? So Shane Pinto, rumored to be offered around the $1 million mark by the, uh, the Ottawa Senators, and he's looking for $2.5 million, has been the rumor. Uh, at the very least, what's not a rumor is he's not signed, and apparently they're not close to a deal. Now, at the time that I record this and get it uploaded, maybe it gets done. But I want to look at the Ottawa Senators, how this team's been structured cap-wise. And clearly, Pierre Dorian believes in the young players he's been drafting. Uh, he has no problem with paying them what he feels that they are worth. And when you look at top forwards in the NHL and what they're paid, they are paid as top forwards. A headline by Tim Stutzla, $8.35 million cap hit till 2031. That is their number one cap hit. That is their highest cap hit. So when we're talking about who is or isn't, you know, on the hook here, you can't look at the fact that their top cap hits $8.35 million and say, well, clearly that's the problem. No. Uh, he had 78 games played last year, 39 goals, 51 assists, 90 points. He should push closer to 100 points this year. He's an absolute star in the NHL. Not it. Uh, Kachuk, $8.2 million till 2028. So Stutzla through 2031, Kachuk through 2028. They are paying these guys as they should be. 82 games for Kachuk last year, 35 goals, 48 assists, 83 points. And much like with Stutzla, I think Kachuk's numbers can get better. So these are, these are two pillars you are building around. If you're the Ottawa Senators, it's important. You have them signed, you have them signed long-term, and you make sure that they're happy. And you're not hurting yourself with the cap. Remember, that is their top two forwards making $16.5 million under the cap, which sounds like a lot to, to most of us, but if you look around the NHL, it's not really that high. Comparatively speaking with other playoff teams, with contenders, it's not really that high. Uh, then amongst the forwards, you got Claude Giroux. He signed for another two years, 82 games last year. 35 goals, 44 assists, 79 points. So the $6.5 million cap hit is fair, right? Giroux gives them that leadership. He gives them that that experience in their top six. He's absolutely been worth it. Then you got Tarasenko. And this is where things are interesting to me because they signed Tarasenko to a $5 million contract. I like Vlad Tarasenko. I think he can live up to that contract. But when you're signing a guy to a contract that's worth that much, you are then telling Pinto, when you go to him and say... You're only worth $1 million. I'm sure Pinto's going to look at that Tarasenko contract and go, well, wait a minute. 69 games, 18 goals, 32 assists, 50 points. It's, that's good, right? But for Tarasenko's career numbers, that's a drop-off. And Tarasenko at this point in time could very well continue to drop offensively. So that's one of those contracts that I understand why they signed it. But you want to get Pinto done first. We'll come back to it. Batherson. $4.975 million cap hit till 2027. This past year, he plays all 82 games. 22 goals, 40 assists, 62 points. Matthew Joseph, this contract stands out. $2.95 million a year until 2026. But last year, 56 games, 3 goals, 15 assists, 18 points. So that $2.95 million prevents Pinto from being signed. And word has it that they're trying to trade Joseph. But if you're a team right now that has Ottawa calling you and saying, look, we want to take on, we want you to take on Matthew Joseph's contract, that team is likely going to say, okay, we've got the cap space, but to take on Matthew jo Joseph's contract, it's going to cost you. So it's going to, it basically, it's going to be one of those deals for future considerations or nothing uh, to get the cap space in order to sign Pinto. But Joseph's $2.95 million cap hit would not be easy to move, especially if the Senators aren't in the mood to trade in first round draft pick, which might be the asking price. And at this point, if Dorian's looking at that and going, oh, I don't want to give up a first, would that be then an indictment on the rebuild, right? So if your GM in year six or year seven of a rebuild says, I'd rather not part with a first round draft pick because that could be a good draft pick, is, is that a sign that this team may not be as ready? And, um, it, is that a troubling sign as well, right? Kubalik was acquired in the Debrinka trade. He makes two and a half million a year uh, for one more season. Last year in Detroit, plays 81 games, 20 goals, 25 assists, 45 points. So again, Kubalik, 20 goal scorer, decent forward, makes two and a half million dollars. I do not blame Shane, Shane Pinto for looking at that and going, yeah, I should be worth two and a half million as well, right? Um, I, I don't think it's it's a crazy amount of money he's asking for. It's not like he's saying $5 million. It's not like it's a long-term contract either. Uh, and then you get into your 
players that are not affecting this. You've got Kastelik at 835,000. Uh, he signed for two more years. Sokolov, league minimum 775000 for a year. He's a restricted free agent next summer. McEwen was signed 775000 a year for three years, so that runs through 2026. And Parker Kelly, 762500 uh, for one more year. He's a restricted free agent next summer. He only had one goal in 55 games. Don't care, I like Parker Kelly. So those are the forwards that are not causing this, this team any pain because you can bury over a million dollars in the minors if you need to. Uh, then you get to the blue line, Shabbat, $8 million until 2028, 68 games this past season, 11 goals, 30 assists, 41 points. Uh, Shabbat's a workhorse, fantastic defenseman. I think that cap hits reasonable. Uh, and again, they don't have anybody with eight and a half million dollars in salary cap money being spent on them. Chikrin, $4.6 million for another two years, so until 2025. Last year, a season split between Arizona and Ottawa. 48 games, 9 goals, 24 assists, 33 points. Chikrin, you're going to worry about injuries, but he can also be a top two defenseman in the NHL. You've got Shabbat, and we will talk about Sanderson in a moment. Zub, $4.6 million till 2027. Uh, Zub, very good defensive defenseman. Is that high for what Artem Zub brings? Probably, yeah. Um, so 53 games, three goals, seven assists, 10 points. And this, I think, is where Pierre Dorian has maybe had a misstep. I don't think it's the top guys. I think it's just a little bit too much money for a guy like Joseph, for a guy like Zub. And I, I get the excitement. I, I love Zub ga Zub's game. But again, if you're spending, say, 500000 more or a million dollars more than another team might be spending on a similarly talented player, you are going to cause yourself some cap pain in the future. Uh, Brandstrom, $2 million for another year. He's a restricted free agent next summer. Uh, 74 games last year, two goals, 16 assists, 18 points. Brandstrom's proje projected to, you know, continue that upward trajectory, I, I guess. Uh, we'll see how things go with, with Brandstrom. Uh, Hamannick, a lot of talk about Hamannick today, but he only makes $1.1 million until uh, 2025. He does have a no movement clause. That does make things more difficult. 75 games, 6 goals, 15 assists, 21 points. I think Hamnick's a good defenseman for them. Uh, solid depth. Uh, but the no-movement clause does cause you a bit of a headache. But that's why he gets the no-movement clause. Maybe Hamnick looking at the team goes, yeah, I'd, I'd like an NMC, please. Uh, understanding that there could be some cap issues. Maybe, right? Uh, Sanderson, yes, he's got an expensive contract. But not this year. 925000 is the cap hit from this season. And then it goes up to the $8.05 million until 2032. 77 games for Sanderson last year. Four goals, 28 assists, 32 points. And as mentioned in previous videos and throughout most of the summer, uh, yeah, he signs a very expensive extension, but we'll see whether or not he's worth it this year. Bernard Docker, $805,000 cap hit until 2025 where he becomes an RFA. 19 games last season, just the one assist. Uh, then you've got in net, they signed Corpus Allo. It's a $4 million a year deal until 2028. Split between Columbus and LA. He had a record of 18, 14, and 4 with a 9, 14 save percentage. Anton Forsberg, $2.75 million cap hit till 2025. 11, 11, and 2 record with a 902 save percentage. And then really, you know, Josh Norris coming back is, is great. He'll be off the IR and all that. But again, it, it does leave you well above the cap. $7.95 million cap hit until 2030. Last year only played eight games. Two goals, one assist, three points. On a tryout is Josh Bailey. They do not have the money to sign Josh Bailey necessarily, although if they sign him, they could just wave somebody else and send him down. Uh, Bailey with the Islanders last year, 64 games, 8 goals, 17 assists, 25 points. He can sign and play that, that fill-in role, which may be why he got the tryout, right? So they've also got some retained money on Matt Murray, $1.562 million, $1 million for another year. Um, I'm surprised Sens fans aren't really, you know, clamoring at that number because, again, he's on LTIR for Toronto. He's not going to play. Uh, the buyouts, you've got Bobby Ryan, you've got Colin White, you've got Michael Delzato. The total of those three buyouts, $3,458,333. And this is where those buyouts can start to hurt you. So those three buyouts are hurting this team currently, right? Uh, that's $3.45 million. That's enough to sign Pinto. So we can talk about all these contracts, but if it wasn't for the buyouts, they'd have the money to sign Pinto. It wouldn't be a problem. Um, there is an issue with going out and signing Tarasenko, signing Corpusalo before having Pinto straightened away. Corpusalo, you had to sign because they needed a goaltender. 
And while I understand why they signed Tarasenko and that they wanted Tarasenko, uh, it is part of the reason why Pinto is still on the sideline. There's also the other consideration here, too. The Sens may actually feel like Pinto asking for two and a half million. That's a little much. They may feel that way. So we'll see how this all ends up solving itself. And who knows? Again, maybe I make a video on this and that solves it. It's happened before. Uh, as soon as I do a video, uh, that's solved. What do you know? Problem, problem solved. We're all done. But we'll see what happens with, with the Ottawa Senators from here. Uh, they have a little while here to get it straightened out. Does Pinto start the season on the sidelines? Does he get signed? Uh, I may require some kind of a move. Like Kubelik is two and a half million dollars. They acquired him in the trade. Do you see if maybe there's a take around Kubelik and then you can sign Pinto? And then the other question becomes, do you move somebody to bring in Pinto? Does that weaken the Ottawa Senators going forward? Does it strengthen them or is it a lateral move? Uh, because again, if you, if you move Kubelik, you're going to need another... Uh, scoring winger. Uh, I know there's those who believe Kubalik's overrated, but he's a 20 goal scorer, and you need 20 goal scorers in the National Hockey League. And so, if you add Pinto at the expense of Kubalik, what does that do for the Sens? And again, if a team's going to take on a Kubalik, if a team's going to take on Joseph, if you find somebody you can take on some of that money, are you hurting the team? Are you trading away draft picks and prospects to make that work as well? Uh, we'll see what happens, right? But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Uh, I, I really didn't expect Pinto to be the RFA that we'd be talking about in September slash October. But here we are. It's October 1st and we're talking about Shane Pinto. Let me know your thoughts. Does he sign? Does he not sign? How much does the cap hit end up being? And how do the Sens work their way around the salary cap issues they're finding themselves in? Or does an injury take place and that's fine. Somebody's going on LTIR. That, that can happen in today's National Hockey League. Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.